Again, unknown gunmen behead victim in Imo. Unknown gunmen have beheaded another unidentified person and displayed his head at Orie Oporo Market Community in Olu local government area of Imo State. This has brought the number of such killings to three persons who have been beheaded in Okopro community starting from Tuesday this week. A source from the community said the head of this person was taken to the market and dumped there. Just this morning, we got the news and went to Okoro Market where we saw the head of the person. We were shocked asking, what does this group of person want to achieve? Um, you will remember that in the market is where the heads of two other persons uh, were killed on Tuesday and dropped. We don't know what next again. We beg them to stop this kind of killing. All is for peace, he said. It should be recalled when contacted on the beheading of people, the Imo State Police Public Relations Officer PPRO Mike Abatam said, We have heard of it and we are gathering the necessary information after which we will make an official statement. And yeah, so I think in this place is this place is located in Olu. And of course Olu is now known as the place for when it comes to violence, anything in the southeast, that is like the hub. Unfortunately, it's become that. Um, and this is a statement to put somebody's head in the actual, where, where isn't it the, the village center? Um, to the market, of course, it's a, it's a probably popular market there. And to dump heads, okay, it's not the first time. Last time was two heads, and now it's one, another head. So it's obviously a symbol, it's a stance, showing power, showing that we've got bodies i don't know what it could signify i am not i don't do this but um yeah this is absolutely sad and it's just like it's ironic because there's excessive military presence in the southeast and for some reason these kind of killings are still going on so who is who's committing them question so who is committing all these atrocities because now it's like um what what's the point um, somebody here says those that are supporting ESN with all this evil is because it has never reached them. Who is supporting ESN? And now you are assuming it is ESN. Such accusations can put you in very big trouble. Do you know that? <laughs> but the thing is, now that technically there is no, not technically, there is military presence in the southeast. Um, why are all these kind of things still happening? Who is committing all these crimes? Because it's definitely not the ESN. Why would they do that? logically why why what is the reason why would they do that to their own people why would they do that to their own people first of all they have their leader in jail in nigeria and the country has proven that you know what we will go through the extreme amount of lengths to get him back so understanding that they don't sit on the government and this government can be extremely volatile which just shows higher levels of red flags and instability and insecurity just bad foundation at all so it's like um they have to be tactical you cannot be reckless you cannot be reckless there's already enough military presence in the southeast their, their leader is literally locked away we don't know what is going on so reckless moves like this cannot be the esn it's disrespectful to even think the esn esn would be that tactless would be that careless reckless everything less because they wouldn't why 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 logically why would they do that understanding that they are in opposition with a very volatile government in which whether they like it or not by law they are still under the nigerian government they're not a separate entity yet so that's it somebody here says unknown gunmen or nigerian army in the market killed and beheaded two men which will cause more havoc because do men okay i'm not gonna oh grandma please someone says these people these policemen are tired already every time they are gathering information at the end of the day they will not do anything that is the problem that is the when it comes to cases like this it doesn't matter it doesn't your position as well let me let me even say ppro it must say police public relations officer as in you're not even you're not even like the, the commissioner of police or anything or head of police in the state. You're not that. You're just the public relations officer, and you don't have enough information to even give out a statement. 
that okay fine we are aware because again in in a normal situation when we talk about security and trust and confidence that the people have in a government you just saying that you're aware because the expectation is that you're going to solve the problem so yeah you just saying you're aware of what has happened gives confidence that okay fine they know what is going on the next thing in line is to follow with a, a, a response you're not doing that you're still calling like what else do you need what else do you need what more do you what more do you need to do to just you're a public like you're literally in charge of getting this news out there being the spokesperson for the security agents in the state and what their plan is you're basically you basically have to you basically have to communicate with the people constantly to make them feel safe and secure that you're going to you know deal with the situation but you know um it's like why in which we make an official statement it says we have heard of it we are gathering necessary information after which we will make an official statement what official statement do you need to make in situations like this it's an emergency your your first your first statement is your official statement but of course they don't rate nigerians they don't rate the people that they're serving do they even deserve to be those positions do they even understand what the position requires of them i am not sure somebody here says um in my light shine your eyes be vigilant the issue of beheadings associated with certain people hmm i okay leave that to interpretation um somebody here says oh lord let peace reign in the eastern part of the country after nigerian army's flani padlock market in Imo state the following day they behead our people why is this kind of courtesy to eagles and that's the thing and it was just cannot react like it, it's so rigged it's so rigged it's not that they cannot react but then it's like the government is on their case the well some people the unintelligent ones um would who are just who who cannot even try at least to be objective would assume anything that is going on with the ESN or IPOB. Them ones, they're the ones that are you know, putting their eyes on egos. They can't react. And I think that is the same problem that happened with you know with the Yorubas. Even though that's a less intense situation. Oh no, it's not less intense, but in terms of the bias and you know the the um, relationship they have with the government, it's not as intense and as you know as history thick as with egos. But um it's the same thing that happens with your bars the you know this the market crisis the market crisis um a lot of things that happened they just they could not they were in a position where if they did not react more of their people would die and even when they did react even though they were forced to because they had no choice they were the ones getting punished for it and does that make sense absolutely not so it puts them in a very awkward position but what i think about it is in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe